Merhaba ve bu ikinci isim fiiller dersine hoş geldiniz. Bu derste isim fiillerden bahsedeceğiz ve isim fiillerle isim ile kullanmak hakkında konuşacağız. So welcome to this video on verbal normalizations. In this class we'll talk about using verbal normalizations with nouns. So in the verbs video we talked about how in meaning and form so we're thinking about the five steps of language learning, right? The meaning is for the past and the present and it means that when you want to make a verb into a noun. And if you want to say like I see that you are going, I know that you are reading, I know that God lives. You can use verbal normalizations with verbs. Tanrının yaşadığını biliyorum. I know that God lives. Now, if you want to ask about objects, like which object are we talking about? And thanks for humoring me for a minute uh, as I explain using all these like technical terms and stuff that's not what you need to know you need to be able to use this stuff right in turkish and not just be able to talk about it in english uh, so let's get straight into it hangi anahtar this is an anahtar right a key anahtar hangi anahtar which key adamın tuttu Anahtar. Which key? The key which the man is holding. So now this isn't with verbs, this is with nouns. We're specifying which object we're looking at. Hangi kitap? Which book? Genç hanımın okudu kitap. The book the young woman is reading. Let's look at this. Which food? Maybe hangi yemek? Or which bread? Hangi ekmek? Yediğimiz yemek. Or yediğimiz ekmek. The food or the bread which we are eating. So if you want to say, I like the food that we are eating. Try to say that. Yediğimiz yemeği seviyorum. Alright, and let's go back to the form and the meaning real quick. Hopefully this is a little bit more clear. So, going back to the formula up here. Okay, so we're focusing on this second line here now. Okudu kitap for nouns. Okay, so which book? And remember, in Turkish, with questions and answers, you can use the same word order as the question to give your answer. So, if I say, hangi kitap, you already know that in the answer, you can just replace the word hangi with whatever the answer is. Okuduğumuz kitap, the book that we're reading. Another example of this, siz nasılsınız, how are you? Well, you know that wherever the question word is, nasıl, ne, nerede, hangi, your answer is going to be there. So, siz nasılsınız, ben, İyiyim. You replace nasıl with i. Anyway, so here's the same thing. Okudu is an adjective. So hangi is an adjective. It's kind of like an adjective question word. Hangi kitap? Okudu kitap. The book that he is reading. By the way, this all becomes one big kalıp. It's one big like block, you could say. One big noun. This thing becomes right. The book that he is reading. You could describe that book now. The book that he's reading is awesome. The book that he's reading is cool. And then remember in Turkish, you just take an invisible is and put the adjective. You want to say something is something. So, Jesus is good. İsa, i. Right? If you want to say, the book that he is reading is good, how would you say that? Okudu kitap i. If the word for cool is havalı, havalı, how would you say the book he is reading is cool? Okudu kitap havalı. 
and again onun is optional because you already have this possessive here that you know oh it's his okudu right if you say okudun then it would be sinin the book that he is reading is cool the book that you are reading is cool now all right so this is really super simple just remember that whatever is together like with your verbal nominalization here it all becomes one big noun uh, you can add multiple multiple more adjectives to this so senin okudun mavi eski kitap you could even add one more adjective it could be getirdin so the book that you brought that you are reading the blue old book that you that you brought and that you are reading is cool okay it's kind of complex it's all possessive right benim okuduğum kitap the book that i am reading because i own that that verb which has become a noun onların okudukları onların sizin okuduğunuz bizim okuduğumuz onun okuduğu senin okuduğun benim okuduğum here could be another noun kitap Right. All right. Back to here. How would you say? I want you to try to say the man that they see is Jesus. Onların gördükleri adam İsa. Okay. What can you do with this? What kind of verb or what kind of noun could you use with this? If you need to, pause your video and think about it for a couple minutes. Try to come up with something. Maybe you could say, the man Jesus is teaching is bad. Maybe you could say that like this. İsa'nın öğrettiği kişi kötü. Or you could say, the man Jesus is teaching is rich. İsa'nın öğrettiği kişi zengin. How about this? Maybe you could say, Meryem'in gördüğü Adam dirildi. The man that Mary sees resurrected. Maybe you could say the place where these people are is sacred. Bu kişilerin oldukları yer kutsal. As always, if there are any questions about the meaning or the form or ways you can practice this and apply it, let us know and we'll help you apply this. Let's do one last thing, going back to the, the young woman, the Genç Hanım. Which verse can I read? Maybe you can say that or you're... You're the friend of the church that you're teaching. Öğretin kişi, the person that you are teaching. Öğretin kişi, right? Might ask, which verse do I read? Hangi ayet okuyayım? And you might say, the verse we shared yesterday. Dün paylaştığımız ayet. So remember, just like we talked about with the verbs video, this can either be past or present tense. Paylaştığımız ayet. The verse that we shared. And you only know it's in the past tense because you say dün, yesterday. Dün paylaştığımız ayet. How could you say the verse that you shared is nice? Paylaştığınız ayet güzel. How would you say... I will read, I'm going to read, the verse that you shared.
ben paylaştığınız ayeti okuyacağım. Alright. By the way, another use for this uh, we need to talk about is non-interrogatives. That's a fancy word for saying, using question words for saying a statement. So in English we say where, what, who, right? The person who you're talking to, the place you're going, where you're going, what you're doing, right? You're not asking a question with those question words, what, where, why. You're saying a statement. So if you're going to use a question word and you're using a statement, ask, is this a question or is this a statement? If it's a statement, use these words, right? So for example, the person who you're talking to. You can say, konuştuğun kişi. So the person you're talking to, Kon, konuştuğun kişi. What you're doing, yaptığın şey. Where you're going, gittiğin yer. Okay, how you're doing this, yaptığın şekil. So if you ask, where is the place where you're going? You can say, gittiğin yer nerede? How would you answer, the place that I am going is the church. Gittiğim yer kilise. Uh, and then also when. Let's use one with when and we'll be done for now. How would you say when you go? Gittiğin zaman. You just use verbal normalization. And then these question words. And this chart has everything that you need for those. So this has been verbal normalizations with verbs. İyi şanslar, iyi eğlenceler arkadaşlar. Görüşürüz.